My name is Dr. Rita Leufle. I'm the Chief Medical Officer of Imogen, and I'm presenting the CT107 poster on behalf of all the authors listed on the poster. The title of the poster is a Phase 1b2 Open Label Study with Randomization in Phase 2 of IMU131 HER2 new peptide vaccine plus standard of care chemotherapy in patients with HER2 new overexpressing metastatic or advanced adenocarcinoma of the stomach or gastroesophageal junction. We present here the interim results of the phase two part of the IMU ACS001 study conducted in patients with first line advanced or metastatic HER2 positive gastric cancer. Previously, during phase one part of the study, 50 microgram of the B cell activating immunotherapy IMU131, also known as HERVAX, broke immunological tolerance to the HER2 self antigen and enabling the induction of significant levels of anti HER2 antibodies, and was therefore selected as a recommended phase 2 dose based on favorable safety and the development of anti HER2 antibodies in correlation to tumor response. In the phase 2 part, Patients were randomized to receive either HERVAX plus standard of care chemotherapy or chemotherapy alone. The study was conducted in Asia and in Eastern Europe, where access to trastuzumab was limited or not reimbursed. The study is an open label study. Patients who were randomized to receive HERVAX in combination with chemotherapy received 50 microgram HERVAX intramuscular into the deltoid muscle at baseline day 14, 35, and day 77 and from there every 63 days as a maintenance treatment until disease progression. The first interim analysis was conducted after 27 patients were enrolled into the study and 15 evaluable progression-free events were reported. The primary endpoint of the study is overall survival, safety and progression-free survival are secondary endpoints and respective data available at the time of the interim analysis as well as preliminary data on her two specific antibodies is included in this presentation. The demographic data are not presented for this interim analysis poster presentation, but patients were balanced concerning age, stage of the disease, and tumor burden. By the time of the interim analysis, 8 out of 13 patients on the control arm and 4 out of 14 patients on Hervax plus chemotherapy arm had died. This translated into an overall survival hazard ratio of 0.418 and a one-sided p-value of 0.83. Out of the 13 patients in the control arm, 9 patients had progress compared with 6 progress patients out of 14 on Hervax plus chemotherapy arm. This difference resulted in a progression-free survival hazard ratio of 0.0532 and a one-sided p-value of 0.086. Figure 3 shows the Kaplan-Meier survival curve with a medium of 8.8 .8 months survival on the control arm and 14.1 months on the Hervax and chemotherapy arm. Figure 4 shows the Kaplan-Meier curve for the secondary endpoint of progression-free survival with a medium of 3.5 months on the control arm and 6.4 months on Hervax and chemotherapy arm. Safety was secondary endpoint in the study. As demonstrated in Table 2, almost all patients experienced at least one treatment emergent adverse events. However, there was no added toxicity noted for Hervax plus chemotherapy compared with chemotherapy alone as demonstrated in the low incidence of adverse events in Tables 3 and 4 that shows single cases of grade 3 and higher non-hematological and hematological adverse events. Left ventricular ejection fraction was measured during the study. Two patients in each treatment group had an LVEF drop of 10% or more compared to baseline. None of the patients dropped under 50% and all patients were asymptomatic. Figure 5 shows the development of HER2 specific antibodies. As you can see, by week 6, HER2 antibodies were developed by the patient's immune system in response to active immunization with HERVAX and remained high during the maintenance treatment with vaccinations every 63 days. Interestingly, one patient on the chemo control arm progressed at week 24 and received trastuzumab treatment after study withdrawal. The patient returned for one final antibody assessment and safety follow-up that showed a similar level of anti-HER2 antibodies as patients that received HERVAX. The final data for the study is expected by Q4 21 and will include additional data on response and biomarker. Overall, data from this interim analysis confirms that an active immunization approach with the B cell activating immunotherapy HERVAX breaks immunological tolerance, enabling the induction of significant levels of anti HER2 antibodies and may provide treatment benefit that is consistent with the traditional monoclonal antibodies for HER2 positive metastatic gastric cancer when added to chemotherapy without adding toxicity. Thank you for the audience.